Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how to read data from a text file, how to sort the data, and how to write the data back to another text file. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so first of all, let's create a new code file. And I'm going to call it file demo. Okay, and the first thing is we'll need using system. And to work with files in C sharp, you'll also need using system.io for input output. Yeah, so don't forget this one. Otherwise, you won't be able to work with uh, files in C sharp. Okay, so now that we have that, let's create a class. Public class. I'm going to call it file demo. Uh, for this example, we'll have no instance variables. Uh, we'll set up a parameterless constructor. Public file demo. You know, we won't pass any parameters. We'll just have it like that. Okay. So now let's work on one method to read data from a from a file. Uh, I'm going to make it public. Return type is void. And I'm going to call it read from file. I'm going to set up a parameter so that we can use um, an array as an argument. And it'll be an int, int array called numbers. Okay, so to read from a file, we can use a class called stream reader. All right, so stream reader will allow us to read data from a text file. So just so it's stream reader. Uh, the variable name, we can call it anything we want. I'm going to call it SR. And I'm going to invoke the stream reader constructor. And then the argument is the file path. So I'm going to use a very simple path. Call it numbers.txt. Actually, um, let's go ahead and make a slight change to this. Uh, I'm going to, above this, I'm going to create a string to hold the file path. And since I haven't created the numbers.txt file yet, uh, we can do that right now. Because if the file doesn't exist in the system, then we'll get uh, an exception error. All right, so we can go here, add new item. If you scroll down, you'll see something called text file so click that and then we'll call this guy here numbers.txt and go ahead and add that and I'll leave my solution explorer pinned for now okay so for the numbers.txt let's write some some numbers here 
I'll write five numbers. 67, 20, 14, uh, 102, and um, maybe 17. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it looks pretty good. So we can save this, or we can save everything, save all. If we put the cursor over the um, the tab, it'll show us the file path, telling us where this file is located in our system. Right? That's the file paths can get pretty long and difficult to work with. What you can do is go to numbers.txt here, right click, go to properties, and under the in the properties window, under full path, you can s the whole path is here. You can just double click on it, right click and copy, and then now you'll have the file path, and then you can use it in your programs. Right? So string path, and then here in the empty space, I'm going to paste it. All right, file path is pretty long. Uh, also, we have a problem here. Uh, these forward slashes need to be, uh, they need an escaped character, right? Because the forward slash is used um, like to for instance like here like to create a new line different things like that so it C sharp doesn't know the difference All right so we need to escape each one of these forward slashes so to do that is just um, just type an extra one on each uh, each slash here and actually I may have called it a forward slash uh, I meant to say backslash I apologize yeah so those are backslashes it takes a little bit but it's better than typing the whole thing out right so then now we can get the path and we can use it here instead there you go that's a lot easier Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to use a for loop so we can read all the numbers from numbers.txt sequentially. All right, so that's for int index equals zero. Uh, we want the loop to run while index is less than the array we've supplied, less than its length. and then index plus plus. Okay, so usually when we uh, request input from the user or from the console, we normally use a command called console.readline. So we're going to do something similar, but instead of the console, now we're going to be using the stream reader instead. Right, so that's going to be numbers, index, and then if we were getting input from the user, we would do something like this, and then we will write console.read.readline. There, that looks pretty familiar to us. Right, so whatever the user inputs, we convert that to 32-bit 30, uh, uh, integer, and then we assign it to one of the elements in the array. Right, but since we're not asking the user for input, we're not getting it from the console, we're getting it from the stream reader instead. So we just change console out to stream reader. So now this code will read every line in the text file, convert it to an integer, 
and then save it in one of the elements in the array. And whenever you work with files, when you finish with them, right after the for loop here, you have to make sure to close the file. There's a command for that. It's just the stream reader variable, member access operator, and close. Right, there's a whole bunch of other commands you can do with the stream reader. So sr dot, and then you can see all the different options you have. But the one we want at the end of everything is to close out the file. Close file when done. Okay, so now we can see if our read from file method is working. Let's uh, create another method public void. Uh, to actually display display the array. All right, so int numbers okay so then here we'll do for index 0 while well, index is less than numbers dot length index plus plus okay and then we'll do now we want to display to the console dot right line and then we'll display every number in the array. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. Let's create a new file. Uh, make sure it's a code file and let's call it file demo test okay now using system public class file demo test And then don't forget your main method, public static void main. Okay. Now let's um, let's create an array. Int array the the uh, array variable name uh, we'll call we'll use numbers equals new int oh uh, I think we made it five sorry about that so we, we'll do it at five then let's create a file demo object obj equals new file demo okay so then let's first of all call the the read from file method so that would be obj dot read from file read from file takes an argument of integer uh, an integer array so then that's numbers All right so that's this guy here okay so then once we read from the file we get the numbers 
from from here then we can display our array to make sure that the numbers were set up properly or transferred properly okay so let's try it out control F5 All right, so it read all the numbers from the text file. All right, so let's say I close that out. Let's say I make a change to the text file. 50. Fourteen. Ninety-nine. Uh, two and one thousand three or ten thousand thirty two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. Okay. So let's save that. Let's um, modify the size of our array. Now we'll have ten numbers. Okay, so then now I made the change to the text file. Let's see if things still are working. Control F5. See, there you go, and they show up. So we can make a change to, let's go to file demo. Rather than console.write line, I'd rather, I'd rather have everything on one line instead. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Except I don't like this press any key here on the same line as the as the numbers. So to fix that, after the for loop ends, I'm gonna call console dot write line. I'm gonna call it once. Alright, so that way that press any key to exit or to continue uh, will end up at the on the next line. There you go, that looks good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna work on is trying to sort the values in the array. So I'm going to create a new method here. Public void uh, sort array and we'll take the array as a parameter. And actually we're going to use a sorting algorithm called bubble sort. So that's bubble sort. And let me show you how that works before we actually write the code for it. Okay, so for bubble sort we look at the first two elements. If the first element is larger than the second one, then we swap them. So here 6 is larger than 3, so then these two will swap. Then 6 and 1, 6 is larger, so this must swap also. 6 and 8, uh, the 6 was not larger. 8 and 7 is larger, so then they need to switch. Then the 8 and 2, the 8 is larger, so then the 2 and the 8 should switch and then the 8 and the 4, the 8 is larger so then they'll switch out and then after the first pass uh, the elements to the right are already sorted right but the loop keeps going keeps checking the next set of numbers 5 and 1 are out of order so it'll switch them again 5 and 6 are okay 6 and 7 are okay the 7 and the 2 are not, so then it's going to swap with this. And then 7 and 4 are out of order also, so then those two will swap. So then now 7 and 8 are in their correct position. All right, so it's going to keep going. 3 and 5 are okay, 5 and 6 are okay. The 6 and 2, the 6 is larger, so the 6 and 2 need to switch. 
then the 6 and the 4 need to switch. So then now 6, 7, and 8 are in the correct place. And then 1 and 3 are okay, 3 and 5 are okay, 5 and 2 are not okay, so then they need to switch. And the 5 and the 4 are out of order. So then 1 and 3 are in the correct place for now. 3 and 2 are out of order, so then those will switch. And then now you can see, as this keeps going, they're all in order now. Right, but the system has no way of knowing that, so it has to just keep checking them all. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how bubble sort works, uh, let's do the code for it. So first of all, you're going to need a bool variable and we're going to call it swap. The next thing you need is um, a temporary variable and we'll make it type int. So when we do a swap uh, we'll need to place the first element in this variable. It'll make more sense once all the code is typed out Okay, so for a bubble sort, it can be done using a do while loop and a for loop. The for loop is nested inside the do while. So do while while swap is true. Right, and as we saw in that demonstration, the algorithm finished once there was no more swaps uh, once there was no more swaps occurring then the do while loop will end right but as long as there's swaps still necessary then the loop will continue to run right so inside the do while loop we'll assume that there is no swapping necessary so we'll set swap to false. And then for our for loop, we'll do int index. We'll start it at zero. Then the we'll have the for loop run while index is less than numbers dot length minus one put the minus one in parentheses and then index plus plus Okay, so this inner loop is going to be checking the elements in the array to see if they're out of order. And the way it does that is it compares the element and then it also compares the element adjacent to it. All right, so if numbers index is greater than numbers index plus one which is the element adjacent to index All right it's one over if the first element is greater than the second one then we need to swap them All right so then to do a swap that's where this temp variable comes in. So right, so we'll set temp equal to the first element. Then we'll set the first element 
we'll set it equal to the second element. Right, so we're writing over the first one with the value contained in the second one. Without the temp variable, if we had just switched them, then we would have no way of putting the value that was originally in numbers index, putting it back in the second place. All right, so that's what the temp is for. So then numbers index plus one. we'll set it to the value inside temp. So that's how the swap works. But so the do while loop can run again. We'll need to set swap. We had assumed that no swaps were necessary, but if the code inside the if statement block was executed, then that means a swap occurred. So then we have to set swap to true. And actually, if you had, um, if you've had a chance to work on the practice from the textbook on selection sort, uh, it's my opinion that this code is much easier to to work with, a little easier to understand. But on the test, you'll have your choice of either selection sort or bubble sort. OK, so now let's test our sorting algorithm. So let's go ahead and go to file demo test. OK, so then here, I'm going to make a change to it. Console.write. unsorted so then uh, with these two lines here on the bottom we'll display the unsorted values sorted values And then here at the bottom, I will display, I will sort the numbers and display them again. So then here, console, well, actually, I'd rather sort them first. So OBJ dot sort array uh, we have an argument numbers okay so then that should sort the numbers then I'm going to display them so I'm going to do console dot write sorted Then I'm going to obj dot display array. Okay, so let's see what happens. Control F five. All right, so this was the unsorted array, 67, 20, 14, 102. I had two 14s, yes. So it's 2, 14, 14, 17, 20, 50, 67, 99, 102, and this large number of 10,000. So then now they're sorted. Close that out. OK, so. What happens if you forget in the bubble sort algorithm 
if you forget numbers dot length minus one, right? Is the minus one necessary? All right, so let's go ahead and remove it. I'm gonna delete it there. So it'll, it'll look like that now. If I do Control F5, uh, we see that we get an error. Uh, index out of range exception. Right, trying to see if we could read all of it. Right, so why did this happen? Right, so obviously the minus one needs to be there. So I'll make sure don't don't forget it. Uh, but the reason it happened. Let's take a look at this real quick. So here's an example of our array, right? When we're doing the comparison between this one and this one, what's happening is it's comparing the first element with the second one, the second one with the third one, the third one with the fourth one, the fourth one with the fifth one, the fifth one with the sixth one, and so on. The length of this array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. All right, so the, we'll write that 10 down for the length. All right. But how many times in the first iteration does it go through the array? Okay, so I compare this and this. That's once. Then I compare this and this, that's two. Then I compare this one and this one, that's three. Then I compare this one and this one, that's four. This one and this one, five. Then this one and this one, six. Compare this value with this value, 7, 8, and then 9. All right, so the inner loop runs 9 times if the length was 10. So that's why we have the minus 1. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is write a method to actually save our data to save the numbers that are now sorted to save them in a new text file all right so let me show you how to do that all right so maybe a next to read from file right below that we'll create a new method called uh, write to file We'll send in the array. <clears throat> okay. Then the first thing we need is the path to our file that we're going to create. So I could do something like string path equals and we can actually save it maybe in the same place where we got the numbers to begin with so I can get this guy here copy and I can paste that there uh, the only problem with this is if we use the write to file method then we'll save over our original data file I don't want to do that I'd rather just create a new file here. Uh, maybe I could call it something like numbers or sorted sorted numbers. All right. Okay, so now we have our path. So instead of stream reader, now we're going to use the stream writer stream writer we could call it SW 
equals new stream writer and it takes the file path as an argument so I'm just going to pass the path to it okay uh, one thing to keep in mind is if the file doesn't exist because we haven't created it yet the only one we created was numbers.txt but we haven't created sorted numbers.txt yet so if the file doesn't exist then the stream writer will create the file. If the file already exists, then it'll write over it. All right? But there's a way we can fix that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop. While counter is less than the array's length. counter plus plus and when we write something to the console we usually do console dot write line then we might write the value to display on the screen and put a semicolon. The thing is we're not writing to the console. Now we're writing to a file instead. So all you need to do is change this out, the console here, to the stream writer. So we're not writing to the console, we're writing to the stream writer. So sw dot write line. And then when you're done with your file or your stream writer, make sure you close it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the stream writer. Now let's test it out. Let's go to the demo here. And we'll, we'll say something like uh, save your data. All right, once everything is sorted, now we want to write it to a text file. So then that would be obj dot write to file pass the array. Okay, so let's run this code, see what happens. Control F five. Okay, it should have worked, but there was no confirmation or anything like that. So we'll have to look for the file. Okay. Okay, so maybe if we rebuild the solution, maybe our file will show up in the list. Let's see. Rebuild. Nope. Okay, that's fine. We'll just look for it. Okay, so what we can do is let's right click on working with files video or whatever you named your project. Uh, open folder in file explorer and then we'll see here our file is showed up sorted numbers so double click on that and then now you see they're in order okay so the last thing I want to show you is how to write a method to actually search through the array to find a particular value. And if that value exists in the array, uh, have the method return its position. All right, so maybe here uh, we'll do what's called a linear search, where we just check each element one by one. The simplest search we can code, linear search. So then we'll do public 
uh, the return type will be int to return the position. And we'll do linear search. Uh, we'll need two parameters, the array that we need to look through. And we'll need the value we're actually searching for. Uh, we'll call it the search key. Okay, so the code for the linear search is pretty simple. Uh, what you're going to do is it's a for loop int index. We'll search through, we'll start at the beginning, so we'll set it at zero. While the index is less than numbers dot length. index plus plus okay so then if numbers index equals the value the user is searching for the search key then we'll return the index All right but if the for loop runs and it reaches the end of the array and the search key wasn't available then we'll just return a negative one All right the negative one means that the value was not in the array because the index in an array always has to be a, an integer that's zero or greater All right so if we return a negative one there's no such thing as a negative one index so that means the value was not present okay so then let's use our search code or search algorithm Okay, so then let's go to file demo or file demo test. I'm I'm gonna comment out I can comment this out. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is OBJ, or actually, I need to save the value returned from the method. So int position equals OBJ dot linear search. And uh, what value? Well, first of all, I'm going to put the array in there because that's where I'm going to search for the values. And then the search key. What am I searching for? Um, I'm searching for, let's say, the number 14, right? And that value is in my uh, array, so it should return its index. Okay. So then if. position equals negative one and that means that the value was not found else
console dot right line the index of the value is and then position so that means it was in the array and it's this is its location that we're trying to get back okay so let's try this out Control F5 alright the index of the value is 2 okay that works pretty good the only thing is I don't like this word value here I'd rather display the search key so I'm gonna make another variable int search key and I can set this to 14 and then I can put here search key and then here not found what was not found the search key Okay, so let's try that out now. The index of the 14 is 2. Okay, well, maybe I take the the out. There you go. The index of 14 is 2. Okay, so it was in the third place, right? Because it starts from 0, 1, 2. Okay, so let's say I put a different number in here uh, 23. Was there a 23 in our array? Let's find out. 23 not found. Right? There was no 23. All right, so if we look at our text file, uh, there's a 50. Let's see if it finds it. Yeah, the index of 50 is 5. Right? Does and is that true? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, that is true. And that's a linear search. Very simple to code. Very easy. Okay, so for our next test, uh, you'll need to know how to do a linear search, how to read from a file, how to write from a file, and how to sort. And of course, everything else we've learned up to this point.